Hello and welcome to the show. Today I'm going to be talking about Forza 7. I'll be honest, this is not particularly a video that I wanted to do. However, it is a video that I feel like I should do. I don't know whether it is going to be of any help. I don't know whether it's going to be add extra shouty noise or anything. However, I wanted to take a little bit of time, consolidate all of my thoughts and put them together into one video talking about the current state of the game. Now let's start with the latest car pack to have come out. There has been an awful lot of complaints about the car pack. Now this is going to happen with whatever car pack comes out regardless. Okay, I have seen it over many years of being a fan of Forza games. I know if I designed my 100% perfect car pack, there would still be a huge number of people complaining. You will never win. You will never please everybody. It is 100% impossible. That being said, it is quite possibly the weakest pack we have seen for a Forza game, full stop. Now, having said that, I still do like some of the cars in it. You know, it's nice to have different cars. The, type, the, the Bugatti, the, the classic Bugatti, the classic BMW, are cars that we don't see in racing games, full stop. Perhaps outside, Gran Turismo 4 has some wacky cars, but even that I don't think has those two particular cars. It's nice to have variety, nice to have different vehicles and have the possibility of messing around with them and, and getting them to, you know, compete with current vehicles and that sort of stuff. They're interesting enough cars to have. There's a classic Porsche Formula 1 car. While that's not my sort of uh, vehicle I tend to race, it's an interesting part of motorsport history. There is a modern 911 RSR that for some reason is a half-secret hidden car. It's a very weird way of launching cars with a DLC pack, especially the one that would perhaps interest the most people. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. In fact, there's a lot of things I don't understand about the decision-making progress, but why the 911 was a slightly weird way of going about things. I was kind of pondering if it's going to be a Forza Thorn reward car at some point. It might be, but yeah, it's, it seems like a strange way of doing things. And we have a classic Chevy sort of sedan car that I haven't really driven too much. Mess around with it, probably put a big engine in it, make it very, very powerful if that's your thing. And then there's a bunch of SUVs. Uh, the Jeep Trackhawk is perhaps the most appropriate. Let's face it, it is designed to be fast around a track. It's an interesting inclusion to the game, but the fact is it should have been there from the start. We already have a basic Cherokee SRT, and as I proved in an earlier video, with a combination of parts, you can basically spec it to be a Trackhawk. So why we bothered with the Trackhawk edition, I'm not sure why we wouldn't have just had the Trackhawk to start with. It, it seems like a bit of a strange thing, uh, but, you know, the Trackhawk is supposed to be fast around a circuit, so it certainly deserves a place in a motorsport game. The Cayenne is just an updated version of another Cayenne we have. I, I don't really see the point of that one. And the Safari, turns out, is actually quite a fast racing vehicle, as you will learn tomorrow, if everything schedules properly. But, again, I can understand the upset, I can understand the disappointment with the with the car pack. Yeah, it is probably the weakest. Hell, if the vehicles in it were spread out over the other packs, that would probably be okay. Maybe have the two real classic cars in the same one, but you spread it out a little bit more, it would be okay. But the fact is you put all relatively weak vehicles together is not not great going. And the one vehicle that the vast majority would be interested, or the larger majority would be interested in, is the one that's hidden. <laughs> it's just weird decision making. Very weird decision making at that. But, here's the thing. The car pack isn't the problem. The car pack is not the problem with Forza 7. Neither are the car crates or loot boxes or whatever you want to call them. That is another thing that a lot of noise has been made about, a lot of complaints and so on. They're not the problem whatsoever. It doesn't mess up the economy of the game. You can still earn plenty of money very easily on here. Personally, I haven't. I've not actually spent that much time doing sort of career mode on this game. I had various other commitments at uh, this time of year. And yeah, I don't have a huge amount of money, but it is not difficult. It is not difficult at all to earn money on this game. The crates themselves actually only have specific cars in them. There is, there is a fair amount of locked cars, we'll get onto those in a minute, but a lot of those are prize vehicles that are sort of being saved for prizes for various events. They aren't something that you can get out of the crates regardless, so you can spend as much money as you like on crates. 
you can't get them out. One of the issues is that with the car collection screen is very misleading. Any locked car, it gives you a list of ways to unlock them, but that's just a generic list. Not every car can be got out of the prize crate. It's been confirmed somewhere that not every car can be got out of prize crates and so on. That is a very, very misleading, misleading list. Uh, the complaints about kind of microtransactions are still unfounded. This game doesn't have any. While they are supposedly on the way, they've been supposedly on the way since launch and they still haven't appeared. And with EA busy shooting themselves at as many limbs as they possibly can, I think it unlikely we will see them appear anytime soon. I might be completely wrong, of course, but it would be an even more dumb decision to start playing around with that large amount of fire at the moment. Not impossible, but, you know, I don't think, I don't think we'll see. And if we did have tokens with the way that the economy works on this, on this game, the tokens we've seen in previous games, as I stated two months ago, would be irrelevant. So, yeah, the car crates, they aren't a problem. Now, the locking of cars is something I do want to briefly talk about. It's... Not something that I necessarily agree with, but I can understand the logic behind it. We're going to get to some stuff that really doesn't have any logic, but the locking of cars I do kind of understand. There is a very, very large number of vehicles in Forza 7, and keeping some of those vehicles back for prizes, whether it be in Rivals mode, whether it be prizes for Forza Thon events, that's a really different word to keep saying over and over again, I apologise if I end up stumbling over it, but having these uh, cars as, as prizes for events, I can understand the reasoning behind it. Hell, we had unicorn cars for many years in many different Forza games. The problem was, most of these cars were not something that you could very easily see. Of course, when you go on the car collection screen here, you can see everything with a little padlock next to it, cars that you probably are going to want. Whereas when you go through the buy garage, they simply don't appear. I don't have the issue with having, you know, prize cars, with having to do specific events, trying to do, you know, beat certain lap times in the, the bounty hunter events and so on. It's a way of rewarding players for doing stuff and having prizes for the various leagues and so on. But it's because that you know, it's so very obvious that there are those cars in the screen, or so it's cars in the game, because you have that big car collecting screen, that's where the problem comes in. And of course, this day and age, where the car lists are announced two or three weeks before the game comes out, you know, we all know all of the, the cars and so on, I can understand why people are annoyed by it. I can see both sides, I can see the decision to try, you know, try and get some cars for prizes, you know, have you know, you know for, for players if you've got this particular vehicle it means that you've you know beaten a certain lap time around a circuit beating certain competition and so on I, I can understand why they'd want to do that but it's also a bit of a, a bit of a pain for those who just want to you know mess around with the various cars which is what Forza is best at at the end of the day Forza is best as a game where you can do whatever you want to a wide selection of cars race silly vehicles against sensible cars and that sort of stuff and Forza 7 is trying to hide that part of itself almost so yeah i mean the the locking of cars is not to force you into buying price crates because a lot of them can't even be got through that although it is very very badly worded even then that's not the problem when it comes to forza that isn't the problem with forza 7 the simple problem is the one that has persisted from day one it is incredibly easy to fix. As I said a couple of months ago when the game came out, I could fix this in a day. Well, I could tell people to fix it in a day. I don't have any knowledge of coding, but this simple, simple thing that this game needs, proper rivals modes, proper multiplayer hoppers based on the car classes, not the homologation system. Now, I am not somebody who loathes the homologation system in its entirety. It works for single player. It works quite well, actually, for the single player, splitting up championships and races into vaguely similar cars, similar categories, and, you know, various regulations for them. Hell, that's how real motorsport works for a lot of classes. It works as a way of doing single player. It's different to previous Forza games. Sure, it is. But I think it works as a single player progression it works as a having that in rivals modes having the leaderboards for cars based in these various classes and having multiplayer lobbies for cars in those classes it's okay to have it there the problem is that that is again not where forza is at its best forza is at its best when you have an open class when you can race 
crazy vehicles against the sensible vehicles, when you can build up, you know, the Nissan Safari to go and race against a Mazda MX-5. That's where Forza excels, because no other game is competing in that sector anymore. And Forza is seemingly determined to hide that part of itself as best as possible for no real benefits. And that's what gets me confused with all of this. We still cannot go into a rivals mode and do a time trial based on a class. You just simply can't go into a do a time trial for an A class car around a circuit of your choice. And I don't understand why why that's a thing. Why for the rivals mode we are forced into such strict regimented controlled areas. I understand that you might want some of them. I understand that maybe you will want some of them to have specific cars for, for, you know, for the sake of leaderboards, for the sake of competitions, that's fair enough, keep them. But add in the open class stuff, the ones that are, certainly for me, the more entertaining, and the fact that a lot of people are saying the same thing for two months now, that's what we're after. That's the, that's the, with the rivals modes, the events that we want. Hell, I had a very long run, running series on Forza 6 for building cars for Autocross. I can't do that on 7. I planned to, I wanted to, but I can't do that on 7. The autocross is there. The events are there. There are a couple of rival modes for it, but it forces you to use a specific homologation class. And worst of all is that you can't build cars even for that class. It forces you to use a rental car. Now, again, I understand for the sake of fairness, perhaps, for, for competitive uh, events and so on, sure, force us to use a stock car or everyone running the same thing if the cars are all balanced and so on. That's fine have those events, but also give us options to build our own vehicles. Because that's, again, what Forza is good at. Forza is good at giving you options, at giving you possibilities. I would love to go and take that classic Bugatti and make an autocross car out of it. I would love to go and try and see how it does around an autocross circuit compared to an MX-5, compared to an S200, compared to a Dodge Charger. But I can't. I, I physically can't. I know the game modes are there, but I physically can't do that. It's a very easy fix to allow us to do that. You only need to add in a few rivals modes and so on, and that's just a set of regulations, and we know that they can because the rivals modes do change. They add in the bounty hunter ones every month or whatever it is that they cycle through. It can be done. It's not asking to change the entirety, the entire foundation of the game. I'm not asking to have the homologation system removed. That doesn't need to happen. It's just little additions to add on top to give us the freedom that you expect from a Forza game and for the freedom that the Forza games excel at. And exactly the same when it comes to the multiplayer hoppers. Now personally, I don't tend to race that much multiplayer outside of our own particular event. Partly because the hoppers are crappy at the moment, uh, but I probably wouldn't be anyway. I prefer to set up my own stuff and so on. But if you want to go and race specific cars and so on, you can't. You are restricted by the various homologation classes. They've had two open class ones. I say two. They've had one at a time because they keep insisting on changing them. The current one's an open S class. I'm not that fussed about S class. It's not my not my sort of racing. I tend to enjoy the slower cars. They had A class uh, previous. But why, why can't we have each of the classes? By all means, keep the homologation classes. Hell, I don't mind if you keep leagues as homologation classes, that's okay. But again, why don't we have the freedom? It's not difficult to give us that little bit of extra freedom. It's not difficult to give us those few extra modes to go and race with. And I can't see the advantage of not. I can't see why it is a positive to not give us those. You could potentially argue it's to keep the player base in sort of in specific lobbies to keep those lobbies populated and so on but there was never a problem previous it was never a problem to find a decent sized lobby in whatever class of racing you wanted to do previous at all so why why do we not have the freedom there it's still something that that perplexes me because you give us that freedom, and the issue with the car pack being weak is not mitigated, but it is slightly less. Because if you have C-Class lobbies, well, 
maybe you try and build the classic Bugatti. See if you can make that competitive in C-Class or in A-Class, or you try and make the BMW into something half decent. Maybe try and make the BMW into a drag car. Who knows what, but it gives you the freedom to use those new cars in different ways. As it is, those cars are restricted to whatever homologation class they end up in. If that homologation class doesn't turn up in multiplayer hoppers, what's the point in it in some ways? It's... The, the lack of freedom has a knock-on effect in other areas of the game. As I said, I would love to try and build the Bugatti for autocross. I think it'd be great fun to try and see a 1920s car around that kind of a, a style circuit, but I just don't have the tools. The game is so restrictive that it won't let me do that sort of thing. I did actually, at one point, when I was pondering about what I can do with Forza 7, I came up with the idea of if I couldn't run my own, you know, I say I couldn't run my own autocross series, I couldn't use the proper autocross, I was going to try and build, like, create my own fictional track using the airport, the, uh, the test track area, only to remember that I can't actually access said airport test track in its entirety in, in sort of test drive, in, uh, test drive, sorry, and, and free roam stuff. I can't get to the opened area. I can only use the specific circuit. And if I try and use a tag game mode or something, you can't save replays if it's multiplayer. If I'm playing split screen again, you can't save replays and I'd be stuck trying to record half a screen. Basically, there are so many things that I could have done, that I could have created, that I would, that I want to do with this game. But it's insistence on a specific set of rules and it's just lack of flexibility that's the issue here that is the biggest issue and it's one that just will not be acknowledged one that will not even attempt to be fixed despite it being the simplest damn thing to do I mean, there are a bunch of other problems as well when it comes to it comes to multiplayer the servers aren't the most stable at times although let's face it these days a lot of multiplayer aspects of games can have their own internet issues and I will say that while we have had a lot of issues getting PC players connected to races specifically versus the community uh, since the last update it, it, it worked now whether it will continue to work or not I don't know but the last update was a marked improvement in terms of getting PC players connected but we have had a huge number of issues and these are issues that were never there in previous games even Forza 5 that is the weakest Forza Motorsport game there has been still had less of these issues liveries on cars don't seem to work anymore in multiplayer there is a small chance when you load up in your game it's probably about a 10-15% chance for me at least I don't know how it affects other people that you will load in and, and other car liveries will show up most of the time they don't when it comes to versus the community, sometimes I can get away with that because well, we're all driving different cars. We do a single make race like the 200 horsepower Formula 1 cars, for example. That's a nightmare trying to commentate over that because everyone's in identical cars. The one make race with the Chevrolet Cruze touring cars as well, while that ended up going a slightly different way, would have been a real pain in the ass if I'd done that video normally. Speaking of that particular race, yeah, cars like to go invisible in races, you know, in multiplayer races. That's... Admittedly, we have seen that a little bit in Forza 6, but it's been a lot more prevalent in this one. That's just simple. That's just basics. And that will easily ruin ruin races entirely. I mean, the livery thing is annoying. It's an inconvenience, but it's not horrendously game-breaking. But invisible cars in races? That's a, real, that's a real pain in the ass to try and deal with. Admittedly, again, has been better the last couple of weeks. We haven't seen it, but... We have had a couple of times, as we saw with the Chevrolet, where it just completely destroys stuff. It's just these simple things that were working previous, that were fine previously. I mean, lobby chat has been broken since Forza 5. When you connect to lobbies, again, the last lobby that we had did seem to work a little bit better, but it will regularly drop in and out. There'll be times when you could only hear one other person or two other people. I don't, know, I don't know how lobby chat is as broken as it is, but most of the time it doesn't work. The Xbox parties have a tendency to crash when you fill them up with 16 people. That doesn't help matters either. So, yeah, I mean, the party thing is not Forza fault, but the game chat is barely usable at best through a lot of the time. This is the stuff that needs fixing. This is stuff that's been broken since the beginning and is still not being fixed. Car pack's not the problem here. The car pack is the least of the issues in all of this. Now, you might be sitting there and wondering, 
why am I still playing this game? Why am I still making videos on Forza 7 when there are a large plethora of problems? The fact of the matter is, Forza 7 doesn't have any rivals. Now, that's a strange thing for me to say. Yes, there are plenty of other games out there with cars in them that involve racing. That is true. But, for example, if I want to go and put a NASCAR engine into a Ford Transit and go and do an oval race around Daytona, I can't do that anywhere else. I can't do that anywhere else other than in Forza 7. And that's the kind of event, that's the kind of racing that I enjoy doing. Something that is different. Something that might not have been seen before or might not have been tried before. Sure, some of them don't work out quite as well, but that's the sort of events that I want to do. Do I want to race a 200 horsepower Formula 1 car? Yes, I do. Can I do that anywhere else? Uh, no. Sure, Gran Turismo Sport, Project Cars 2 are very, very good games in their own right. They do, they do stuff very well that Forza doesn't do very well, but Forza gives you freedom to do all sorts of things that other games simply don't. I mean, Gran Turismo was really the last big rival to Forza, and that's gone down a completely different route with GT Sport. GT Sport's not bad. That's a rivaling iRacing. It's going after a set of Corsa and so on with that sort of stuff. Forza is almost entirely... Forza 7 is almost entirely unrivaled in that department. That might also not be helping it, because there is no direct competition to Forza 7 in terms of this, this freedom to build cars how you want. I mean, I'm... Okay, I used silly examples with the NASCAR engine transit and the Formula 1 cars and so on, but if you want to go and build up a, an R34 Skyline to be a, a supercar killer, there's not very many games where you can do that anymore, where you can swap engines into different vehicles that, uh, that you might want to play around with. You know, put a V8 swap in a rotary if you are that sort of heretic, but you can't do that in many other games, and certainly not with the variety of cars, the huge variety of cars that you have in Forza 7. At the end of the day, Forza 7 should have been. In fact, it could still be the best Forza game by quite a fair margin. It has the best driving physics. It has the best track list, the best weather effects, the best lighting effects. It's a huge variety of cars. You may agree or disagree with me that it has the best car list, but it certainly has the best variety of vehicles from your ultra-modern Formula 1 car to, well, the 1920s Bugatti. There's a huge variety of vehicles in here, and it should be the best Forza game, but it's the determination to stifle, almost stifle the creativity that is most jarring to me. It is that creativity that makes Forza 7, or makes Forza games in general, brilliant, which is why I am drawn to them in terms of making videos, is why I am drawn to them in terms of, well, just spending time playing because I can take the Nissan Safari and make it into a surprisingly competitive C-Class car. It'll be surprisingly fast around a circuit, but outside of my specific events that I host, other players might not be able to enjoy that sort of thing with the game because Forza is so determined to railroad you into doing things a certain way. Forza 7 should play to its strengths. It should play to its strengths, and to do that requires minimal changes. You, know, you don't have to change the entire fundamentals of the game to get to that stage. Just add. Add on to what is already there. Build upon what is already there is what you need to do. You will not please everybody. It's impossible to please everybody with a game, but you give us as many options as possible. That gives you the best opportunity to please as many people as possible. I am, at the end of the day, hopeful. Now, expecting... no. And I am hopeful. I am hopeful that maybe some point we will get the Forza 7 that we should have had to begin with. Because I can see a lot of potential. I can see a huge amount of potential with this game. As I said two months ago, this should be the best Forza game that there is. And I'm not talking about this, this should be because it's the seventh game they've had seven times to perfect it. From what there is there, this should be the best Forza game, and it doesn't take much. It wouldn't take much to get it to that level. There is just this weird reluctance to add in freedom. As I said, I can understand 
controlling the career mode, controlling some aspects of, of, of events, that's fine. That's okay to do that. You don't have to ha open up everything immediately. I say everything immediately. You don't have to just throw the floodgates open for everything. But options. Giving as many people options as possible gives you the best possibility of keeping everybody happy. So... Yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on, on the current state of Forza, or the current state of Forza 7. It's a damn good game underneath, and with a minor bit of tweaking, it should be the best Forza that, that there is. I work around the problems that we have as, as best I can, simply because it is the best option that I have in terms of games, in terms of a game to play to do the things that I want to with, with a racing game. I do, I do very much hope that we will see improvements along the way. I don't know whether me making this video is going to be of any use, because at the end of the day, when there are so many people shouting, trying to pull in 20 different directions, that might not help. You know, so many so many different people. Let's face it, 4-7 a very, very large franchise. There are a lot of people not happy, but a lot of people not happy with lots of different things. I mean, things like Toyota not being in 4-7. It's not something that Turn 10 can control. It's not something that Forza can control in that. They pull their license from just about everything. It's, it's gone. You know, we won't see Toyotas in racing games at the moment, aside from a very small select few. Now, that's not Turn 10's fault. I mean, you can be disappointed about them not being in Forza. That's fine, but being angry at Turn 10 for that is nothing they can control, nothing they can do around that subject. That's in Toyota's court, if you like. I've heard a few people saying they've got an exclusive license with, with Gran Turismo, but I'm not even sure that's the case, because even that only has a race car and the GT86, essentially, and a couple of Vision GT cars. You know, you want a Supra, you want an MR2 in a game coming out this year, uh, I don't think you'd get one at all. I mean, you get a couple of Lexuses in Gran Turismo. I'm not even sure if that license deal wasn't signed a while ago, because, let's face it, Gran Turismo Sport has been delayed a fair bit. That's not something Turn 10 can, can control. So, the much shouting about that isn't helpful. Be angry at Toyota, sure, but that's, that's not particularly helpful. And I don't know whether this is going to be another thing to add to the the noise, whether it'll, whether it'll be of any use. But I wanted to share my thoughts. Share my thoughts and... Yeah, offer suggestions as best I can. I am not expecting this to do very much. I am not even well. As I, as I am, I'm hopeful. I, I am. I am hopeful that maybe at some point in the future we will be able to get the game to the the position that it should have been in, to the condition that it should have been in, because there is a very good game in all of it. But uh, yeah, it's kind of this is what I can do. So I am going to I am going to give it a try. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye. <laughs>